we're looking at professionalism um, of the supply chain sector and the Spurs Awards. There are Spurs Awards. Jeremiah Nthusi is the chair of the Professional Standards Committee of the Kissim Council. Kissim being the Kenya Institute of Supplies Management. And he's here with us today. Good morning, Jeremiah. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Karibu Sana. Moses Omondi is the chair of the Registration and Licensing Committee of the Kissim Council as well. Good to have you in the studio this morning. Good morning. Thank you for good morning. Karibu Sana. Um, so, professionalism in supply chain management, one would assume, let's just start from the very beginning. Supply chain management, what's that? <laughs> it's a good question. Mm. Supply chain management really encompasses a lot of activities that run all the way mm. from the time you're sourcing raw materials all the way up to the time the consumer mm. gets the end product. So all those many activities in between divine supply chain management. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> we are talking about mm. getting to the supplier. We are talking about looking at the materials that you require. Mm -hmm. Then um, bidding for it mm. all the way until the materials are being delivered to you. Then they are being distributed mm -hmm. so that they can be able to reach the final consumer. Mm. The a, whole process is about supply chain management. You know, I'm a consumer of history. I love history. <laughs> I love history. I am aware that I represent something historical, which is the previous century, but it gives relevance to it. How did this particular discipline start and how did it evolve? How, how, how did it become... Uh, uh, an institute. A sector even. Thank you. Mm. How did it get to the position that it's in now that it's fundamental to almost anything that you talk of? How? Where did it start? What was what brought about the need? Well, either of you can actually respond <laughs> to that. <laughs> I think uh, supply chain management or other discipline is that is as odd as mankind. Mm. You remember, even those old days, even the biblical times. Yeah. Even at the time of uh, building the Tower of Babylon, mm. you remember the way people would assemble all those materials, mm. collecting the materials, mm. pushing over to the other people, and there are other people waiting up there. So that whole supply process mm. is actually the chain mm -hmm. until the material reaches the final consumer. Okay. I think in addition to that, uh, and when you draw parallel to uh, military activities, uh, military planning, uh, requirement for firepower, uh, the planning for bullets, planning for movement, planning for uh, distribution, uh, was an aspect that they called logistics, mm -hmm. uh, so which is a subset of supply chain. And I think out of that, uh, the fulfillment of the requirements within that chain, which means uh, what my colleague has said, sourcing, uh, of the raw materials, uh, the acquisition itself, uh, storage and inventory management, the operations uh, and add-ons on what they would need, including putting powder onto the gun and all that. Um, the movements, uh, uh, and especially now, like we have issue to do with Ukraine and Russia, the movement of the military tanks and all that until it achieves its intended need is what you can consider supply chain. But closer, Closer home, I think uh, supply chain of procurement was domiciled in the accounts department in the recent history, I think in the 80s. Um, and that is how then uh, within the accounts department, their key role was uh, stock management. And so we had people called stores officers uh, who were now drawn out of um, um, the back burner uh, into visibility and now started being given the assignment of procuring and storing. And we realize within that, that there is a lot more than just the two. Uh, so e easily, uh, that could be our intro. So are we saying that when you talk about a procurement officer, because my mindset is still, mm. are we saying that this is a supply chain manager? Uh, yes, for all intent and purposes, <laughs> when I say manager, because it is a strategic role. Mm. Uh, 
mm. uh, supply chains are strategic role. And I think a key example is recently when we had COVID, um, there was a struggle because supplies were not coming into mm. the country. And of course, mm -hmm. the issue was China. China uh, uh, locked out because of COVID. Being the, the factory of the world could not supply the, the needs in the entire world. And so with that, uh, we realized that supply chain is a really strategic function that uh, a procurement officer, so to speak, as you call them, has actually serious strategic and management uh, roles uh, mm -hmm. and responsibilities. Um, I actually equate uh, supply chain to breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, can't, we don't realize that we're breathing. But the moment there's a challenge, mm -hmm. When you start choking is when you realize, you realize. Whoa, this thing is, is this breathing serious. is important. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so if we're talking about the journey towards the professionalization of the supply chain sector, then it's alluding to the possibility of there being unprofessional practice in the sector. Is that the case? What we could uh, start looking at is the way the function used to be. Those old days before we got uh, the kind of uh, legal framework that we have today. For example, in the public sector, this uh, function used to be done by administrators, mm. accountants, HR people, name them. Until 2005, when we had the Public Procurement Disposal Act. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, immediately thereafter, 2007, we got the Supply Practitioners Management Act, 2007. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine before that, everybody could just do procurement. But procurement is actually a process. It's not instantaneous. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that uh, there is a process that is being supervised from point A to Z, then that's how you call that procurement management. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So has it been unprofessional in nature? Or have we just had, you know, the sector has, there's been wanton, you know, people who are practitioners within the sector have been basically operating in a manner in which they choose. And when you're talking about asking that the sector then be professionalized, then the, again, there's the connotation that people are doing things willy nilly. Initially, it was not a profession. Okay. It was just a function being done by people in dockets like human resource management, mm -hmm. accounting, or even um, any other person mm -hmm. who could just think about uh, bringing on board materials. Yeah. To an extent that uh, we never used to see a lot of difference between procurement and purchasing to everybody, those things meant the same. Mm -hmm. But when you look at um, the moment when it became a profession in this country, we were meant to understand that uh, procurement really is a process mm -hmm. from the point you are, you, you are identifying the need, you come to do the sourcing process, the bidding process, you evaluate all those tenders, you award, and then the materials are being now delivered. Mm -hmm. And you are managing that whole flow. Mm -hmm. Now that is uh, the, the management aspect of procurement, which is actually a process. You know, the profession that we as laymen refer to as procurement has the unfortunate distinction in this country of having a terrible reputation. Yep. Almost every ill that one speaks of procurement. And just when you think that you've gotten out of the waters, there'll be an incident that brings that particular discipline into the limelight. In fact, I would not call it limelight, into the dark light yet again. Okay? You will find that almost every aspect of our lives the things we've referred to as the major scandals in this country mm -hmm. think of it whichever it is goldenberg not so goldenberg uh, all of them procurement or aspects of it were somewhere in the middle of it now so now when you say you want to professionalize it every profession known to mankind is run by human beings 
And for a reputation at that negative to be furthered, it means human beings behaved in a way that brought about that disrepute. Yep. So, oh, come on. over to you. This professionalism, this accrediting, these processes that now seeks to bring this particular discipline into the realm of other professions, what is it that you people have proposed to do and what have you done to ensure that the stink of the past becomes precisely that, I think, of the past. Yeah, um, uh, and thank you for that question. I think uh, it's a question that is prevalent in actually all professions. Yes. Uh, uh, but what you say also brings into centrality the role of procurement. Mm. Because every other issue that comes out, there will always be procurement yes. at the center of it. It indicates it's a central uh, role, supply chain rather, is a central role. And within the role, there are various actors. Mm. Because, for example, uh, supply chain uh, uh, professionals will be looking at the sourcing aspects of it uh, and delivery of the need. There will be, there will be other cross-functional uh, teams, for example, uh, technical teams, engineers, uh, so to speak, accountants who are custodians of the, of the finances. The technical teams are the developers of the specifications for the need that's, need, that's required. The reason uh, supply chain many times comes into the limelight is that we were the, uh, the facilitators in that process. And yes, um, uh, I agree that yes, there has been uh, unprofessional conduct. Uh, relativity is very important. We have so many good uh, supply chain professionals in the country. However, just like any other profession, we have a few that keep tainting us. If we were to look at the percentage, roughly, possibly 5%, so to speak. But that small percentage brings about a very huge taint. And so what have we done in terms of that? And I think my colleague alluded to the fact that first uh, in 2007, we got our enabling law, which is the Supplies Management Practitioners Act, SPMA 2007. Within that, it created various uh, uh, regulations, frameworks, uh, under which a professional should operate, uh, respectively for the role that I handle, registration and licensing. Uh, the SPMA section 16, and section 20, section 16 requires that every person who practices supply chain in the country is actually registered with the institute. Okay. So that's one initial control. Secondly, uh, and that means you're a member of an association. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, in section 20, it requires that you have a practicing license, a practicing license, just like a medical doctor, engineer, mm. architect, etc., etc. So in our journey, the, which started to, uh, way back in 2005, um, um, just up until recently is when we now got uh, sufficient teeth with, because for the very first time we had a substantive cancel. And in the last two years, we've been able to push uh, through compliance notices to accounting officers um, and key stakeholders, including um, uh, Minister um, uh, National Treasury, whose, uh, whose the institute is actually um, uh, um, 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 uh, what we call is under the national Sorry. treasury mm -hmm. uh, in that sense and so out of that we have written compliance notices and required that members comply with that we've gotten uh, significant success uh, in addition we've gone out to publish for the very first time a list of licensed uh, uh, practitioners in, in the kenya gazette which is that one source of uh, reference mm -hmm. that someone can want to look at and say um, individual X is a supply chain practitioner. Is he uh, listed as someone legally allowed to practice law, uh, supply chain in the country? Okay. So that's part of the effort that we are going to, we are continuing to refund, uh, to to to, to uh, advocate for and refund the profession so that we're able to s separate and see those good ones and easily also say this one is not our member. Mm. Remember, it's a supply chain. There are many stakeholders yeah. and there are people who within the process uh, create those scandals, but they're not within our ambit as supply chain. Okay. Yes. okay. So, so break it down just a little bit for, yes. for us to understand. We, we're talking about this uh, need to have a practicing license. Yes. So that means if person X has gone to school to study whatever it may be, Correct. commerce, whatever, they come out and they apply for a job, happens to be in supply chain for a for an institution or an organization, yes. even for government. We are saying that this individual must have the license from the relevant authority to then practice... practice. 
whether or not they are working under somebody or for themselves correct okay yeah now who gives the license uh the institute actually chair the committee that issues out the license yes all right and um, so what are you looking for in order to grant these individuals a license um you must have an academic uh, qualification mm -hmm. Um, and then on top of that, you must have a professional practice qualification, a professional certification. And there are many in the market. We actually have our own certification, mm -hmm. which is called uh, CPSPK, Certified uh, Procurement Professional of Kenya, mm -hmm. equivalent to CPA, uh, K in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so you must have that for you to be admitted as a member mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the academic uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Once you uh, have that, you enlisted as a member then we will go ahead and issue you with a, a license the license is to practice meaning when jobs are being uh, advertised opportunities are being advertised mm. a key requirement is that you must be a member of the institute mm -hmm. and license for mm -hmm. you to onboard onto that job mm -hmm. that already creates a control to, tool for us mm -hmm. uh, for any practitioner and then we have a recourse because we have a disciplinary committee in okay. the event that there are issues okay. uh, with that individual all right yeah and what is this individual essentially doing for an organization what is this this person who works as what are they supply chain managers officers you know whatever they are what are they essentially doing for an organization okay you you are aware that um, organizations have their objectives mm -hmm. that they have to meet and for them to meet these objectives they have to be facilitated because they need services they need materials they need works mm. so that they can be able to discharge their mandate. Mm -hmm. So it is this uh, procurement officer or the supply chain management officer rather who is supposed to facilitate and ensure that uh, all these materials are, are failed. In fact, the act that we are talking about recognizes that nobody in this country should participate as a procurement person unless this person is registered mm -hmm. and licensed to carry on that task. In fact, the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supplies, UK, mm -hmm. puts it very clear that you can do all manner of things in the name of procurement. But to the extent that you are not a professional, then ideally that is not procurement. Mm -hmm. That is not procurement. If it has not been done by a certified procurement office, then that is not a procurement process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Certification. Do ask the question and I want to belabor the point. Yep. Where do you start off before you even get to the point where you can be certified? Of course, the background is that uh, the academic uh, qualifications you've gone through uh, college university and you have uh, a preferably you have a supply chain management uh, course mm -hmm. uh, at what level at uh, college level university level when I ask level yeah diploma level certificate level or minimum level. requirements mm -hmm. minimum requirement mm -hmm. according to our act is uh, diploma level is that not discriminating <laughs> um in in kindly guide in what sense <laughs> Not everyone can uh, afford to get a diploma and yet they may be interested. And if a certificate course is offered, uh, you don't qualify. Uh, we, the, the idea be behind that is that you, we do not deny you to become a member of the institute because we have categories of mm -hmm. membership, uh, mm -hmm. student uh, category. This is someone working towards that. Then we have associate level category where you are possibly having a job role but you're working towards full qualification. And then okay. we have the full member category. So there is no discrimination in that sense. It's taken care of. The idea is to keep you pushing towards a, a higher learning, higher right. knowledge. As, as you acquire skills, as you acquire correct. knowledge, correct. then you get to the point where you, now you can become a full member. Mm. Correct. Yes. Okay. okay. Well. <laughs> can we take a break? And then I see that, that question will just uh, sit on your tongue for just a minute. Let's take a break and we come back and continue this. And I know that that biting question will come. It's Kenya's biggest conversation professionalizing the supply chain sector in the country continues after this this is the situation room the only way to start your day we are talking with jeremiah 
um, Thusi and Moses Omondi and on committees from the Kenya Institute of Supplies Management and we're looking at the journey towards the professionalization of the supply chain sector and CT. The question was burning your tongue. Well, uh, yes it was. Uh, you see, when you talk of uh, supply chain matters, see my mind went to something perhaps which was uh, should we say well, it's supply chain in a sense, but it has to do with intellectual property. Once upon a time, there was a company called Enron. Massive scandal. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Now, I look at the service that they were uh, providing as having been sourced. Now, the question I'm asking, I have three questions. So this is the first one. Does this fall under supply chain when you seek professional uh um, participation in your business. If I look for an accountant, if I look for an auditing firm, yeah. if I look for an engineer. Yes, you are quite right. Because uh, professional services are a part of uh, what supply chain management officers procure. Mm. But again, we are also guided <coughs> in the way we procure some of these uh, services. Okay. And um, again, the people that are providing those kind of services mm -hmm. are also obligated to ensure that uh, even as they deliver this service, they are also guided by the provisions that guide their their particular profession. Yes. Okay. So if you look at uh, the audit issues around the way those books used to be doctored mm. there. <laughs> then and that is why the professional body now had to whip the professional body that uh, supervises those accountants had to whip the auditors. And if we come back to our country here, yes, you find that uh, the scope of uh, the supply chain management is so expansive. It is. Mm. It is quite expansive because almost everything is actually falling within the supply chain management. Mm. Yes, it does. We are talking about those, the acquisition of those goods, managing issues like doing uh, rentals, mm. doing leasing. Even, uh, <coughs> even when you look at uh, the problem that occurs some time back, respect to some acquisition of land here in Nairobi okay. City. Mm. So it's quite expensive. But mm. what we are uh, saying is that for us to have a very smooth flow, we need to professionalize the supply chain management itself mm. so that whoever is participating in facilitating the process is registered and qualified supply chain officer mm. because already the law is there okay. it criminalizes anybody who puts some employees to work and deliver on supply chain management and this person is not qualified okay, okay. Yes. There's, there's a direct human element this is where my concern <laughs> is mm -hmm. yes this is forms now part of the second question which is really a two in one yeah i am looking at the world of manufacturing and I'm looking at issues that have arisen in the not too distant past with regards to not just the place where the, the goods and services are manufactured, but the people, child labor specifically. Yep. Yeah. And I'm looking at how it is that the UK then passed in 2015 the Modern Slavery Act. Okay. Yeah. It was a response to some of these things. And I'm looking at some of the issues that rose with manufacturers, say like Nike, mm. Max and Spencer. Yeah. It's not that the product was not good, but the people who are involved in their production. Yes. So now, when you talk about professionalism in this country, and I look at the manufacturing sector, the condition in which the human beings who produce these things work. Yeah. Is this one of the things that your institute looks into? It is because uh, we are looking at uh, the standards that guide the profession. So there are those principles that must guide us whenever we are doing procurement. Mm. So that when you are dealing with those manufacturers, 
there must be a criteria that you will yeah. put in the tender document, for example, so that you are sure issues around human rights, issues around environmental sustainability, yeah, impact mm. are also taken care of. So that it would not make sense for you to procure goods from even a manufacturer mm. who is not even uh, tax compliant. We want people who also respect the existing laws mm. so that when we are dealing with them, we can see for sure that these are also clean business citizens. All those are parameters that we consider when we are doing procurement. Mm. We must be sure that your procurement processes are that ethical. Mm. How is the quality mm. around the raw materials that you input into the system? Those are issues that concern us as procurement people. Okay. And those are factored in the specifications that we must put in the tendering document. Okay. We can't run away from the fact that whether we're comfortable talking about it or not is that unfortunately, from what we've seen, whether it be hearsay or actual fact, that a lot of corruption that takes place, whether it is at government level, whether it is at private institutional level, happens through these very offices that we are trying to uh, professionalize. Right. That the individuals who sit in those seats are often depended upon to make sure that things go under the table or under the carpet. These could be professionals in their own right. They would have passed the mark they would have gotten the certification. But unfortunately, we cannot legislate for morality. We cannot yeah. professionalize for morality. Yeah. That happens at a very high level. Yes. How do you deal with those issues? Because it all chalks up to professionalizing the sector. First of all, we have to appreciate from where we started. And we said that procurement itself is a process. Look at where we are starting. Mm. This is the item that we want to procure. So he gives us the specifications. He's a user. He's not a procurement specialist. Mm. So there are so many players that uh, play their roles along the chain. But we are also involved at some stages. There are so many stakeholders. Mm. So what we are saying is that every stakeholder who is participating a role in the whole process must play his or her role right. We as a professional body have taken charge of our people. Mm -hmm. We are telling them that when you are opening the tender, this is how we go about it. But remember, even the opening of the tender involves other stakeholders, mm. apart <coughs> in addition to the supply chain people. When it comes to evaluating those standards again, the users, the technical people are there. The procurement person is seated there, will give guidelines, but is there to just facilitate taking minutes. Okay? The decision makers are these other evaluators. I, I don't know if I'm communicating. You're communicating we, leave, we leave that process and we award the tender through the due process. Then if there are materials being delivered, say computers, for example, there is the inspection and acceptance process where, again, we have a committee. And this committee comprises those technical people because you may not have the capacity to say whether this gadget meets the specs or not. It's the technical person who is supposed to raise the necessary certification and assure that this item is it's okay. It's like when you are procuring drugs, for example. Unless you, you have the necessary qualifications, even the procurement person himself may not ascertain mm. as to the authenticity and the quality of this drug. I think possibly in addition to, and I like what you say, you cannot legislate morality. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there is, in as much as we give technical uh, capacity, we license, mm. 
and we enable uh, professionals to practice. There is a part that is, uh, at the end of the day, an individual responsibility. Right. And that's where now, uh, I think in many ways, determines a professional. And I think what we're trying to do is to build capacity on what we call softer skills, fortitude, for you to withstand uh, influence and still be able to deliver what is right mm -hmm. for the country. Mm -hmm. It is a, it's a tricky thing in the sense that we have many actors. You imagine the, in the chain, we, and we call it the chain, we have accountants, we have engineers in that process, we have supply chain professionals in that process. However, because we are the ones who are the tail end releasing the professional opinion and the final decision in terms of contracting with the accounting officer, that last part is what uh, the two final actors need to have fortitude to do what's right mm. for the country. And it's a matter of morality because you don't lack the technical skills, you don't lack the qualifications, you don't like, lack the licensure. And this is where you must now determine uh, in many ways, patriotism to do what's right. Uh, I'm going to place country. some huge responsibility on those shoulders and ask the question. Yes. The money that we've seen lost, yep. a lot of it comes through these channels. Yes. Do you think that with professionalizing this sector, that it's possible to gain on the losses that we've made in terms of loss of funds through corruption? Because that's what it is. Yes, uh, and I think it's a process. Um, I think we're coming from somewhere uh, where there was a lot more being lost mm -hmm. and we're closing in on that. I think uh, statistics in case almost 30% of government uh, budget is lost through, and, and also really even uh, sometimes private sector, is lost through the procurement process. Mm -hmm. Possibly that is reducing, but the other suggestions would be possibly taking a multi-professional uh, body approach in terms of clamping down uh, on individual mm. professional players within mm. the chain, mm. not just the supply chain. And those are uh, uh, collaborations we can seek in terms of uh, um, trying to cut back on corruption. Mm. But ultimately, uh, there's also the issue of uh, top leadership in the country. And many times, the tone must come uh, from there. Mm. Of course, in say, setting uh, the, the, the process very clear that uh, we are a corruption-free society uh, in that sense hmm. yeah. are there some untouchables in the sector i, I, I ask that because <laughs> it, it, it in as much as it it's it, it's a huge sector i believe that everybody's known at some level and because of the sensitivities or the intricacies of the sector that there's some people then who become notorious but you cannot touch them as is often the case with matters corruption in some areas. So within the sector, even as you try to professionalize it, does it make it more difficult if they're untouchables? Within, within it's, a, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> and within the sector, I don't want to say they're untouchables because we have legislation, mm. we have uh, regulations, and we have uh, a disciplinary process internally. Mm. And if cases are brought in, um, they can um, they can also be handled at that level. Okay. However, we've also seen uh, the other f on the flip side, um, uh, what we can call uh, unwarranted uh, singling out of our professionals in a chain process, and perhaps we find sometimes that uh, within other sectors, I'm not trying to run away from responsibilities. We find that. Uh, there are challenges, and that's why I was advocating for a multi-professional body approach. I'll so, Moses says, he's a pastor. Let's say I'm a procurement officer. You'll see the high brother. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so I think that negative perception. But you know, my brother, <laughs> you shouldn't worry too much. The pastors are catching up with you. Yeah. <laughs> they, they might actually be swimming in the same pool. <laughs> yeah. So. But we should not lament. Mm. A lot has been happening. Even during that time when people had to step aside, a lot of investigations were undone. Mm. But fortunately, fortunately, all the procurement people were taught to go back to their offices. Mm. And even up to now, there are some officers from the other dockets, finance, accounting, who still have issues. Mm. But what we are saying is that mm. corruption is not a one-man show. It, it's a collective effort. 
and especially looking at what we have described as a process and that's why Moses was saying we need some kind <coughs> of a, a multi approach mm -hmm. so that all these other professional bodies come together and right now we have a lot of collaboration the accountants with the HRM in fact we even have um, annual conferences where all those uh, professions are confronting issues together me yeah, i think that is the way forward so mm -hmm. that we can be able to read from the same script if you look at what is happening today the investigative uh, agencies they have employed people from all disciplines mm -hmm. procurement people are investigators we also have engineers we also have accountants and why because most of these problems could happen at a certain stage this problem could be at the payment level where you are squarely dealing with the accountant mm -hmm. where you are dealing with the procurement process we need an expert there so that when you send him to my office he can be able to run with the process from where i started running with the procurement up to where it ended it is the supply chain expert who can be able to unearth issues that are hidden there. We agree, but the multi-sectoral approach also yes. gives an opportunity for people to hide. Because then, yes. in as much as you're collaborating, then you keep passing the buck. Mm. That's it, is, it is multi-sectoral, but individual ownership uh, within your respective profession still remains mm. uh, in that sense. And I think, yes, um, a good question as well. But the other thing is that we would uh, also, in many ways, humbly invite the fourth estate to support us in advocating what is also good many times like what for instance um yes uh, and i'll give a good example mm -hmm. during COVID, um many public offices and even in pri private institutions actually uh put in a lot to build in capacity bedding capacity in many uh, counties in the country mm. that uh, improved our ability to handle patients uh, as a country it was highlighted yet but it almost died on. But that, we sometimes forget the work that was put by the professionals uh, to highlight good in the midst of uh, difficult uh, circumstances. And there are many infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. uh, all this has been done here through the hands of supply chain professionals. I agree completely. Uh, so, so we need to feature that mm. in a balanced way. Yes, we agree that there are some people who are not really... I agree, but yes. there's, a, there's a Kenyan mindset. Yes. Yes. Which seeks to find and i'm going to use the word excuse in someone performing their duties that's what you're supposed to, to do. do okay correct yes. the time when we praise you is when it's exemplary yes. and it's consistently exemplary, exemplary. So, you know this is this but if it's just what you're supposed to do and the discussions about gaps take a bigger center stage than the good that you do then it means you need to clean up your house you see literally every discipline yep. or association yep. has a communication wing in this day and age correct right? correct correct so if that message isn't coming out uh -huh. again now let, let me make this sort of statement <laughs> that you made mm. yes. it is not that the fourth escape is, is running away <laughs> from its its mandate yes but it is assisted greatly okay. when we also get the information that we can put excellent mm. yes. Okay? excellent yeah. yes, excellent. yes. Yeah. we can't Agreed. guess at it we can't cobble it up you have to give us that information just like you're doing now correct yes then it becomes easier for us to be able to consume it and then say ah you know mm. looking at this perhaps the perspective ought to be this correct indeed i, I, to I totally support you mm. because uh, information is power without information mm. you are likely to crucify somebody who is very innocent sure when something happens the whole procurement process mm -hmm. and probably mm -hmm. it is something to do with an engineer yeah who came and maybe certified works to, to to be quite okay yeah but to the extent that is a procurement uh, process. process yes project yeah then you hear you see moses mm. <laughs> the procurement officer oh, is, a, is yeah. the one has messed up everything so what we need to do mm. is uh, a very deliberate way of sensitizing our people so that they can be able to appreciate the kind of roles so many people play in the procurement process mm -hmm. so that each person should be held to account 
for their own actions. Okay. Indeed. And we have got no problem as procurement people taking responsibility See. on issues that we have done ourselves. Fantastic. That's what we are praying for. It's really great to have these conversations with you and an hour rounds out really quickly. <laughs> Thanks to both of you, Jeremiah and Thusi and Moses Omondi from the committees of the Kenya Institute of Supply Management. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank it would be great to have conversations moving forward.